A veces. Still looks brand new. Um, Adam Savage would say, this is confirmed. <laughs> there are federal agents outside my house. <laughs> Here at Warlock Engineering, we have a lot of resin. A lot of resin. We still have more resin. I'm going to fire the person in charge of requisitions. That leaves us with a question. How do we know which resin is best for our applications? I present to you the Morlock Engineering Digital Impact Strength Testing Machine. By comparing the amount of energy present in the hammer at the initial position and the final position, before and after striking the 3D printed part placed in the striking position, we can determine how much energy was absorbed by said parts. A Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller is hooked up to a potentiometer, which is in turn coupled to the principal axis of rotation of a hammer. Today we'll be testing five resins. Aligu ABS-like resin, frozen high temperature resin, frozen matte gray, high stiffness, and most importantly, frozen nylon-like resin. Frozen is the brand. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is a material I'm very excited for, the frozen nylon green tough resin. Now I haven't quite figured out what this is made of, but I have an idea. <laughs> no way. It's like a clock. With the nylon test pieces, none of the parts actually broke or fractured, but instead bent. Wait. Right. It's dents the floor. Bro, it's <laughs> I mean, it didn't pull dent it, it out. You can't. You might, uh... It's not breaking though. What we have here are two 3D prints, one of them in Aligu ABS like gray, and another one in the frozen nylon like. So we're gonna drop a hammer on them and see what happens. The angry green boy. Angry green boy. Hold on. Oh wait, 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 wait. Let me put my on one of All right, go ahead. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh God. Wait. What are we doing? Put on some eyes. Oh, thank you. You're about to blow something up. Just wait. <laughs> it broke the clamp. <laughs> John, I don't think you're stronger than this plastic. A veces? That's a failure. Myth has to confirm this. <laughs> Looking at just the values here, I would say that the Illegal Gray ABS-like resin is this winner. However, the frozen nylon-like material is extremely tough, and I would much prefer it in any application. Instead of shattering like regular resin, it bends to an extreme degree. I have never seen this material shatter in the time I've been working with it, and that's why I would use it in all of my engineering projects. However, it is twice the cost of regular resin, coming in at about $77 per kilogram. So depending on what you're doing, you might want to choose the Illegal Gray material. It prints quickly and it's cheap, so it's great for prototyping and general use. However, if you're doing anything that requires high performance, definitely go with the nylon. One drawback is that it's transparent, which doesn't look quite right in a lot of products. So you might want to dye it, and there are products available to do that. If you're working at high temperatures, then the frozen high temperature resin works pretty well. It's not gonna shatter um, like the frozen gray resin does, which came in dead last. I know I say this every video, but stay tuned for the aluminum printer. We're making progress on that. In addition, right now we're working on a project that involves extremely powerful magnets and 3D printing. If this project were to work, we'd be able to print out anything at a rate of one meter an hour, which is sort of at the cutting edge if it would work. 
In addition, I wanted to talk about what is maybe in this nylon-like resin. Nylon is very strong because of hydrogen bonding. This means that partially positive and partially negative atoms are able to align, get close to each other, and stick. It's also the reason why materials like Kevlar are very strong. So I think this nylon-like material works by using acrylic monomers that contain nylon-like moieties. Maybe in the future we might do a video where we make our own custom resins. We'd have to order some materials from China and I'd need to get a lab. Which means that if we're able to make nylon resin, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to also make Kevlar-like resin. If you're interested in any of that, let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe as well to stay up to date. Today on Meth Combustors. <laughs>